Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a video on TanStack form with Vue and using Zod for my validation. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through TanStack start form validation. A couple of things you need to know right from jump is that this is a release candidate, but I was able to get it up and running. I took the, if we go over here to TanStack, we start with view, come to, and you can follow the basic installation instructions. I'm focused on form validation. And so I just kind of took this basic example and built on it. Now I'll tell you right now that if you do this, you will run into a couple of gotchas. I mean, you can make it work. I had to dig into GitHub to find some solutions to my problems in GitHub issues, but it, it can work but also it's still V0, so I didn't, I didn't get too frustrated with it. I expect that I'd have to do a little bit of digging. Please make sure you like and subscribe, let's kind of get to it. So this is my application. I just wanted to test different types of form input fields for validation. So like this is a calendar. And so how it manages its data is definitely than how a checkbox handles its data and definitely different than how a select form handles its data. So I wanted to show examples of some different things. And then down here, you can basically just see this is getting updated as I'm entering data. So I enter a name, accept terms. You can see that it's keeping this button disabled because all these fields are required. I select the value. You can see it's updating down here. I set this to check for, you need to be 18 years old. So you see if I just select today, we capture the data, but when I submit, it says you must be 18 years old to register. I probably want to change this to on change so that you get it before you hit the submit button. But this is what we got now. And I'm just going to get through this video. So let's change this date to a time when I know that I will be 18. And then now I can submit and I get all this data here and it says to check the console to see the data. So if I click more tools and go to console, you can see, let me zoom this in a bit for you. You can see that we got the values that we needed. So that's what we're trying to do here. Really just show how to set this up, how to do the validation and how to get the output. So if we walk through the code a bit here, nothing magical in main. I have the files open that are impacted by uh, what I'm trying to do with this app. All right, so inside my app view, I just have this form component, which is what's rendering all of this. So if we go to my form component, this is where all the magic happens. Let's start with the, let's get down into the code. I did leave a note to explain some of the stuff that I'm doing in here, and I tried to comment as best as I could, but we definitely need to use a use form. The field error is my component that's rendering this error message down here. And then I needed to, well, the watch, was a debugging thing, but the on mounted is to trigger a validation when everything first starts up so that I can get the appropriate state to disable my submit button. So that's what the on mounted is being used for. And then the form schema is what I'm importing for, I'm using Zod and the type comes from uh, inferring from my Zod form schema. So it knows the shape of the data that I'm using. So before we go to the shape of the data, let's take a look at the form schema so we can see how I set all that up. This is just Zod stuff, so I'm not gonna go too deep into it. Just plenty of stuff on Zod. But I have my form schema defined here. I have a name. I set the constraints of at least three characters. I have a birth date. I have two different things I'm checking here. A, birth date is required. So I do this kind of refine here with Zod. Once again, I'm not gonna go too deep because it's Zod stuff. And it checks to see if it's a valid date. And then the other thing I do is I convert the thing to an actual date. I calculate your age. And then if your age is inappropriate, then I return you return that you're not the proper age. My terms needs to be a Boolean. And so this refining is to make sure that it returns a Boolean value. Cause so I think the check is a string. I might be wrong there, but this that's the refine is just verifying that I returned a Boolean. And then the favorite color, just to make sure that we select something from the this uh, drop down here. And then this is what I mean, how we're inferring the type from it. And so we're returning. So then I know what is the shape of my data in my application. So that's the form schema. So we can close that because we covered that. We can close at view, we'll focus on form component and I'll cover field error when we get to it. All right, so a couple of things. Uh, one, I don't know if you do react, 
very similar to uh, React Hook Forms, how, how some of these things are set up. But you use the use form. We have the shape here from the form values, which I just imported. And then we set our default values. We're going to initialize everything to blank except my terms, which will be initialized to false. And then we have on my, my on submit, and I'm just dumping it to the console. So one of the first things that I had to do to get my submit button state properly was I had to add this on mounted to basically trigger a validation on mount. So then I could get the appropriate state to set the submit button to gray. If you remove this, it won't work properly. Your submit button will, when you start up your submit button, it'll be active. The user will hit submit and all the arrows will get triggered. I wanted the submit button to be disabled when the user launched the application. So that's what this on mounted thing is doing here. This handle submit just calls the form handle submit, which will then trigger this code. And then down here, this is the watch that I added. So I'm just tracking the form state. And this is so that I could dump it out in the console log here. So that's how we're getting this dumped out is that anytime there's a change in the form state, I just dump out what the change is. And then that's the end of what I have going on here. Everything else is really being managed inside of the form. So let's quickly go through that. Okay. So they have the interest, interesting pattern where they basically wrap. So you basically wrap your actual HTML element inside of this form field component, which then has a slot for your field. And it passes you the field information and it passes the state information in. So to start at the top, my field is name. I have the name here. These are the validators that I want to run. So I want to run a validator on mount and I want to run a validator on blur. And this is the validator that comes from my form schema that I showed you earlier. So it's just form schema shape and then the property name and this will pass in the validator which will be executed on mount and on blur. And then here inside of my template, this is going to get the name, because so I want this HTML4 to have the name of this item. So it's name. And then my here's my input class, most some styling. And then once again, I'm just passing in the value. So the field name will be name, the name will be field name, and then the field state, which is what I'm I'm dumping down here. So field state value here is I'm dumping this in the UI so you can see it. So what'll happen is here, it'll pass in field state value for the field, the field is named, so you will get Bryce Daniel Saunders as the value that will display here. Now when the input on change, this field change handler will get called and it will get passed in the value from the original HTML element event. And so this will handle the change on this form field wrapper. Seems a little bit confusing in the beginning, but as you start to do this, you get the hang of it. It's just like cut, paste, cut, paste, change a few names. And then also I just wanted to handle whatever blur action needs to be done based on the field. We're going to pass it through also here. And then let's just talk about the field error so that we understand what's going on here. So here I pass in the state of this specific field to my field error component to kind of render the appropriate error message. And so let's take a look at what's going on there field error. This is boilerplate code, mostly copied from the documentation, but I did have to make a couple of changes. So one of the problems, because I'm validating at startup and I'm validating at submit and I'm validating a bunch of places, I, I was wondering why, I can dig into it later, but what will happen is, in case you see this, you'll get the same error message rendered twice. And so all I'm doing here in this code is I'm creating a set from my errors which will then will to basically dedupe it. So this will remove any duplicate error messages and I'll only end. So if uh, you must be at least 18 years old to register is appears twice in my errors, this will dedupe it and it'll only appear once, then it'll only render once. But basically what this says is if this field was touched and there's errors, the error array length is greater than zero, then take my errors, dedupe them, and just loop through them and render them. They have this prop state meta is validating. 
because there you can do async validation. And so this gives you the ability to display some message while it's validating. So that's what that is. This field error component is used on all the fields. So that's a wrap. We won't be discussing it anymore. And no worries, I will provide all the source code. All right, so that's a basic input field. Let's look at the birth date, the same pattern again. Um, I did add an extra validator based on the way the component works because I needed it to update the error message. Basically, I needed it to validate on all of these scenarios, not just on blur. So as soon as you change, I needed it to update because you could potentially select a date, but not a date where you're 18 years old. So I wanted to just immediately give you that feedback. Um, so that's why we're validating on all three of these actions. But it's the same as above, we're passing the field and the state in, we're setting all these variables, and then the on change and the on blur once again are set. Down to the checkbox. One thing that is different here, notice that on a checkbox, what we want is the checked value, not just the value. So we're getting the target and then we're seeing if it's checked and that's the value that we're passing through on change. And the favorite color, that's a drop down. Set up the exact same. We have our select, we set our option values. And this is just like the input and the, and the calendar. We pass the value through on change. Probably could do the on blur. I haven't played around enough to see if that's something that I need. I try to minimize the validation so we don't have any screen flicker or anything like that. But um, that's what we got. Now this was another interesting thing that um, I found inside of Tensec form is this ability to subscribe to changes on the form. And so what's happening is that when the form changes, I get passed in these values, which are from the form state. Actually, I'm not sure if it's from the form state or from the form. I'll have to check on that. But I get passed in these values. I suspect they're from the form. Yeah, it's from the form. So I get passed in these values into my slot so then I can use them to help me determine if I should disable the button or not. Right, so the can submit will let me know if I need to disable it or not. And then the is submitting allows me to change the title while it's in the middle of submitting the data to the back end. So in theory, once again, if this was an asynchronous call, I would want to disable and I want to change the title when you are submitting so that the user got the appropriate response. But this form subscribe is pretty powerful. It's a way to basically get updated information on the form whenever it changes. The, the hard or long way around it is kind of with this watch that I'm doing down here. So like ideally I could take this watch, remove this watch and just dump my log state inside of a form subscribe. The watch is just gonna get called on every change within the form state. And I believe from the research that I did that the form subscribe is only going to get triggered when the form changes. I might not be 100% correct. Also, I'm just learning this too. So somebody in the comments, let me know if I'm wrong. But that's basically it. I think it's pretty cool. It does what it needs to do. One other shout out is I, this UI is coming from Daisy UI, which I've been using a little bit to kind of simplify my life. I've basically bought into the Tailwind hype. It's just an easy way to make things look nice quickly. And Daisy UI provides a set of components. It provides a set of components that are based on Tailwind that could give you a nice clean looking UI. And then you can extend it even more with your own Tailwind classes. So that's what Daisy UI is. All right, thanks. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you wanna see more, please let me know and I will see you next time. Thanks, bye.